The Simple 1500 series, Volume 1 to 24. In my Earth Defence Force videos, I mentioned the EDF Guts Star as part of a line of budget games called the Simple series. But the Simple series is more than just the source of some long running niche game series. The Simple series got its start on the PS1 with the Simple 1500 series. The 1500 referring to how much yen the games cost. 1500 yen is about £12 at today's exchange rate. That's what I'm going to be looking at this video. The games that is, not the exchange rate. While many of these games were typical budget game crap, you know, mahjong games, card games, sports games and generic genre games, there were some unique games to come out of it. And I'm not just talking about Earth Defence Force and One Chambra. If I were to speculate, I'd say there were two reasons for this. First is that the games were cheap to make and, with less money on the line, they could afford to take some creative risks. Second, because these games can't compete in terms of graphics, content or advertising, they had to stand out in other ways. Having a unique or wacky premise was one way to do that. In total, the 1500 series had 104 games, and I'm going to review all of them, kind of. See, I don't read or speak Japanese. That's not really a problem, as many import games, you could kind of feel your way around using your knowledge of gaming conventions and simple brute force trial and error. But there's a lot of games that I can't play even with that method. I don't know how to play Mahjong. I don't know how to play Hannah Fudder. I don't know how to play Poker. I can't read the trivia game. I still don't know how to play Mahjong. And I don't know what the hell this even is. You could argue, since these are generic card and board games, that I could read the rules online somewhere, but I don't really want to. I've had people try to teach me poker before and it never seems to stick. Plus, it seems a bit of a waste to learn this stuff just so I can review a budget game and say, yep, it definitely is that game alright. Plus, by that logic, I should learn to read Japanese and do these games proper justice. I have to draw the line somewhere. Still, I'll go through as many of them as I can as an ignorant Westerner. I should also mention that I don't have much to say about many of these games, simply because there's not much to say about them. You'll see what I mean. Volume 2, The Shogi. Like many of the traditional games in the Simple series, this one looks more like something you'd see on the SNES, not the PlayStation. Also, the startup screens for these board games all have the success logo, despite Wikipedia claiming they were all made by different developers. Anyway, this one seems to be some kind of Japanese chess-like game. Maybe I could figure it out given time, but as it is, I don't know what all the pieces do. Volume 3, The Gomoku Narabi. As far as I could tell, it's basically noughts and crosses, only the board is bigger and you have to get 5 in a line instead of 3. I haven't managed to win a single round of this against the computer. Volume 7, The Card. The card is a selection of three card games played on what is possibly the ugliest card table I've ever seen. It's some kind of vaporwave vomit. The first game is called BJ, which is blackjack and not something more fun. Wolfenstein. There's poker, or at least I think it's poker. English speakers might be able to figure it out because the other players are voiced in English with Japanese subtitles. Four. Drop. Raise. Though why you'd play some obscure Japanese PlayStation game instead of one of the many other poker games available is a question only you can answer. I don't know what the third game is supposed to be. So not knowing how to play the other games, I played Blackjack. It's easy enough to figure out. The first two options are draw and stick, or hit and stand if you want to be all cool and Las Vegasy about it. The other moves I couldn't figure out. One seems to be give up, but you get your bet back, and I assume double down is in there somewhere, but I didn't bother figuring it out. Volume 8, The Solitaire. Solitaire is not the card game, which was surprising. It's some kind of puzzle game where you make marbles hop over each other. The graphics and music are nice, I guess, but it's not my kind of thing. 
Volume 9. The Chess. It's chess. Volume 10. The Billiard. Now we're getting out of shovelware town and into the real games. The Billiard is, as the name implies, a billiards game. There's three games on offer, Nine Ball, Pool and some other game called Rotation. I was never a big fan of pool, but I did play a bunch in school. Our rec room had a couple of pool tables and many holes in the ceiling from people putting the queue up onto the ceiling and slapping the bottom of the queue as kids are wont to do. Anyway, the game looks good, sounds great and plays well. The music is smooth jazz and the sound of the balls is spot on. The graphics are great for a PS1 game and the physics are excellent. Even the AI is good, being competent at the game but still making mistakes occasionally. Another thing that helps is that, while all the menus are in Japanese, the game itself is in English. Overall I like the billiard. While I'm more of a fan of action games, I can imagine booting this up again if I'm ever in the mood for some virtual pool. Volume 11 The Pinball 3D have you ever played that Space Cadet pinball game that seemed to be on almost every Windows computer back in the day? Well, the Pinball 3D is basically that. I've never really been a big fan of pinball, real or virtual, so this game wasn't that interesting to me. Still, I think calling it 3D pinball is a bit of a stretch. There seems to be two tables and they're pretty bare bones. Basically, they're just pictures with lights on them. I'd have preferred it if they went crazy with it, but uh, whatever. One thing I didn't like is that both tables have a path around the top that drops the ball right between the flippers. So if you're unlucky, when you pull the plunger, you will lose the ball immediately. Ah. Volume 13, The Race. The race makes a good first impression. The graphics are nice, with good car models, and reflections in the windows and everything. The sound is... passable, ranging from ear poison at full revs... to nice reverb effects when going through a tunnel. But the physics are rough. Your car is either stuck to the track like glue or sideways and stopped with little in between. It feels artificial and weird. The hitbox on the car seems large and inconsistent, making me afraid to go near anything. I raced on two tracks, then I unlocked the second car, which I just couldn't control. One weird thing is that the game is full of references to Simple 1500 making me think they were proud of this one. It even got an English release. This is the first simple series game from Tamsoft who would go on to make bigger and better things. This game though, it plays like crap. <laughs> Volume 14, The Block Krizushi. It's breakout. There are power-ups to make the bat wider and you can make the ball go faster and break through multiple bricks at once by pressing X at the right time along with other minor mechanics but it's basically breakout. Volume 17 The Bike Race This is a weird one. The Bike Race is a dirt bike game and obviously a budget game but it has licensed bikes and even some FMV. But the physics, holy crap, the physics. I know it looks like I'm playing badly in these clips, but the controls are simply broken. The bike doesn't turn, it strafes. But this isn't the kind of game where the bike drives itself and you switch lanes. You have to turn the corners. Eventually I figured out that the bike will turn if you hold square, which is the brake. But doing so can cause you to lose speed 
often turning you so sharp that you hit the inside wall. Holding the accelerator will turn you sometimes, but only sometimes, and trying to turn without holding the brake or the accelerator will cause you to strafe. Despite these crippled controls, I did manage to win the race as I unlocked an FOV clip of a guy doing a wheelie in the next tier of races. I kind of wonder who this guy is. Is it stock footage? Is he a well-known rider? Or is he one of the devs or something? These days, there's no real reason to play this, especially when options like Ricky Carmichael's Championship Motocross exist on the same console and is way better in every way. Volume 18 the bowling. The bowling is a bowling game. There's bowling, a quest mode where you do specific challenges, and a special mode on a giant space bowling alley. The graphics are nice enough and the gameplay is simple. Set where you aim, how much power you want, and then press the button at the right time to determine accuracy. The more powerful the shot, the faster the accuracy meter swings. There seems to be a limited amount of aftertouch as well, allowing you to steal the ball down the lane. There's not really much to say, I was surprised by the inclusion of quest mode since so far these simple series games have been pretty bare bones and I personally found weaker, more accurate shots to be more useful than powerful shots but in the end, it's a bowling game. Volume 19, The Sogoroku It's a roll and move board game, you choose a character and play the characters don't change anything as far as I can tell, and there's no mini games or skill to it as far as I could tell. It's completely random, so there's not much to it. I didn't even complete a full round as I got bored long before getting close to the end. The menu music was fun though. Volume 20, The Puzzle. Some kind of Buster Move style puzzle game, but you have to catapult your pieces in an arc, timing your shots to get them to go where you want. Not really my kind of thing. It did have a FMV CGI intro though. Volume 21, The Yak U. The game's alternate title is Pro Baseball according to Wikipedia, and it appears to be a baseball game, but because of the language barrier I couldn't even get a game started. Either that or it's a management game. It did take up 5 memory card slots, which seems like a lot for a simple arcade game. Volume 22, The Pro Rest. Basically WWF Smackdown, but with generic wrestlers. Or maybe they are real Japanese wrestlers. I doubt it given the weird proportions and the fact that this is a budget game, but it could be. I really don't see a reason to play this when Smackdown is basically the same game in English with real wrestlers, though I did have a friend who insisted on playing the Japanese version of WWF No Mercy with different wrestlers in it, so I don't know. The controls are largely the same, but the buttons are all in different places, so I didn't know how to defend myself properly. Not that it really mattered in the few matches that I played. Volume 23, Gate Ball. It's croquier, or at least some variant of it. I don't know the rules, I assume it's to be the first team to get your balls through the numbered hoops, but when I played there was a traffic jam around hoop 2 and I got bored before the game finished. Volume 24, The Gun Shooting. The gun shooting is basically a light gun game. Upon starting a new game you're greeted with an FMV anime intro. I'm a fan of this era of anime and I think it's impressive that a budget game has a full 2D animated intro like this, basic as it is. The game itself, as I said, is a light gun game. I assume it has gun con support, but I don't know for sure. I used a controller and there's no analog support so I had to use a D-pad. Instead of shooting people, you're shooting various spaceships and robots making the game feel like a first person G Darius or a Star Fox light gun game. Where the game gets weird is the shooting itself. The crosshairs are twitchy and hard to control with the D-pad and there's no analogue support. But at the same time, the hitboxes are generous and you could take a surprising amount of damage before losing a life. 
The amount of button mashing makes it a tiring game to play, meaning that it's best played in short bursts. Even so, your fapping hand is going to be in great shape after playing this. As you can see, the graphics are that chunky PS1 goodness that people like me enjoy. If there's any complaints with the game, it's that it sometimes felt as though there was sometimes a delay between me shooting and a shot firing, or possibly even the game missing inputs, but I couldn't confirm it, and the gameplay is so fast that it's hard to know for sure. This is something I'm willing to say is my fault and not the game's. I like the gun shooting, that's not to say it's some missing PS1 classic, it's a serviceable light gun style shooter that's funny enough to be entertaining. Now I know all these games are made by different companies, or I should say a handful of companies making a few games each, but it's amazing to see how far the Simple series has come. In 24 games we've gone from to And to me, that's fairly impressive. You probably noticed a lot of games missing. As I said earlier in the video, I didn't bother commenting on stuff like Pachinko or Reversi or Mahjong or any of the other games I consider to be shovelware or I just didn't understand. Basically, if I didn't have more than a sentence to say about the game, it didn't make it in. Nobody's really going to miss a game where all you do is play slot machines anyway. I did boot them up and try them all though. So for the sake of completeness, here's the games that I didn't review. 1. The Mahjong 4. The Reversi 5. The Igo It's Go 6. The Hanafuda 12. The Quiz 15. The Pachinko and 16. The Patchy Slot That's the slot machine game. And that's this video over. To play us out, I'm going to play the intro from the gun shooting in full. Thanks for watching. Bye. ハンブカクもいるはずだ。奴らの尻に一発食らわせてこい。こういう仕事ってガンと向きよね。お仕置きが好きなのはそっちだと思ったけどな。